Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you to the uh, first of the 10th anniversary in the Research Exchange Series here at Citrus and the Bonato Institute. I'm Camille Crittenden. I'm Deputy Director of Citrus and really pleased to um, welcome you not only to this uh, first event in the anniversary, but the first event of this um, semester and this year overall. So we're really pleased to have a distinguished speaker and an alumna of one of the Citrus programs at the Citrus Foundry, um, which you'll learn a little bit more about um, through her presentation. There's a lot of, go of events and um, activities going on this semester. There are a few flyers in the back for you to take um, just to alert you to some upcoming activities. As you know, the research exchange talks are here every Wednesday at noon and they are um, broadcast to the other Citrus campuses. We're, of course, based here at UC Berkeley, but also have close affiliations with the campuses at UC Davis, Merced, and Santa Cruz, and so we're pleased to have them um, also be part of the, the Citrus family. Um, I wanted to share with you, uh, one of our um, writers in previous years did a feature that was never published, actually, but he did some research about the Citrus Research Exchange. And so just to say a few words about this series, it's been going on, as I said, for 10 years now, and it was started under a previous director, Paul Wright, who was a professor of mechanical engineering and was director of Citrus for a number of years. Um, and so he really wanted to have an opportunity, not just for a one-way broadcasting of information, but really to have an exchange. And so that is why it was titled The Research Exchange and not a series or a, a speaker um, event. And I think our speaker today will really embrace that idea um, by leaving plenty of time for Q&A at the end. But in this article, there was one other Citrus PI who was interviewed, and he had a wonderful metaphor. I thought, this is Greg Niemeyer, if any of you know him. He was in art practice and a member of the Citrus community for many years. And he observed that um, just as cities often grow up on the banks of rivers, that Citrus as a community has really grown up on the changing river of the people who have come through the research exchange and really participated in this. So I want to thank you all for being part of the river <laughs> that helps to create Citrus as well and to be here for this particular research exchange. And I hope that you'll come back for many more events in the next few weeks and, and years, we hope. So just a couple of things to put on your calendars. Next week, we have an event on Tuesday around AI and automation and its effect on the labor force, particularly for those with disabilities and those in aging populations. It's called Putting AI to Work. Um, so please take a look at that and register if you're able to come. That's on Tuesday. And then, um, actually next Wednesday, the next research exchange will not be in this location, but we're doing it in collaboration with Haas uh, and Professor Kai-Fu Lee, who's a renowned AI expert and business person, will be speaking um, actually at the Haas, the Speaker Pavilion in Chu Hall, which is the new building over there. Um, so that one will be a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, it's actually sold out at the moment, but we're looking into providing overflow seating here, so it could be that you could also see it here um, to be confirmed. Um, but please take a look at that as well if you're able to, to join us for that. So I'm really delighted to introduce our esteemed speaker today, um, Shishi Ju. Uh, as I mentioned, was a member of a foundry company, DNA Light, and she'll be telling you a little bit about that company's journey. She serves there as Vice President of Business Development and Operations. Um, she has held a number of positions and has um, a very esteemed academic background. She has a Master of Philosophy in Bioscience Enterprise from Cambridge University and a Master's in Philosophy from neuro, uh, in Neuroscience from University College in London. Um, as I mentioned, DNA Light was part of the Citrus Foundry Accelerator Program, um, which has been going on for five years now, and she was actually in the seventh cohort of the Foundry companies. So I hope she'll say a little bit about that as well, along with her co-founders who were also UC Berkeley alumni. So please join me in welcoming Shishi Ju. Hello, my name is Shishi. Uh, thanks for the great introduction. So before I start, I would uh, I would add a little bit more of my professional experience. So 
this is my first startup and uh, not as a founder or co-founder actually join a company on the other side because previously I actually come from the dark side I was at a venture capital that are investing in these companies so uh, finally I had a chance to go on the other side and I would say the, gr the grass is much greener on this side <laughs> so yeah so before I start I just want to ask a few questions like is any one of you here wants to start a gene therapy company? Please raise hand. Good, we have a good amount. Are any of you guys in the process of starting a gene therapy company? Okay, great. So maybe this lecture will help you start off later on, immediately. So, so a little bit of introduction to the gene therapy landscape. So given the AAV, that are, has, has, has correct the gene therapy sectors that are our company, for example, Unicure that and, uh, and, and, and Spark are working a lot of it. Gene therapy candidates mostly focus on the eye, the liver, and the brain. And as one of the largest, largest organ in the body, GI is highly neglected. For some reason, from the venture capital perspective, somehow GI is just not very sexy which is great for us, which means there's no competitors in our space, and we went on with it. And uh, as AAV itself is a good vector to deliver genes are slightly smaller size, but for larger size, AAV is actually not a very good vector. And also that a GI, the GI epithelium shut off every four or five days based on, based on the disease, the, the status of the disease. So AAV wasn't really going to be a really good vector. So by understanding and the study the GI tract, we decide, okay, let's dump AV. Let's go for something that our AV can do or even better. So we, had a, we studied a virus and we took inspiration from a polio virus and we created our own platform, which is non-viral form, that are able to re retain the characteristic of a polio virus that are also able to deliver large cargo to the GI tract. And I think we have something really robust and concrete. So this is our journey. So DNA Light is a start by Move Hedge and uh, Tim, who are alumni from UC Berkeley. Well, they are actually a student here. Maybe one of you guys were started a gene therapy today, uh, company today. So in 2016, they came up with the idea. They did a lot of brainstorming, literature research. So they find a two indication that there might be an interesting target to go with this might be they decide why don't we give it a go so they apply to citrus then got accepted then later on uh, generated some data with, with the help from citrus a small, small capital at the time was enough and then with this data they were accepted to IndieBio which is a San Francisco based incubator that are focused on bio, uh, biotech and the therapeutic company then in 2000 wait sorry slightly before 17 uh, 2000, 2017 September I joined them interestingly enough it was we just talked on the street it was like oh your company is really interesting what do you do then we meet for more coffees then Three months later, they lured me from London to San, to San Francisco. It was a good story. And then in December 2018, we were accepted by Bayer's Collaborative Space. So Bayer, Bayer Collaborative Space is like JLab, but not like JLab. We have no affiliator with Bayer. They are just our landlord that provide space and, uh, and help us to set up. And then at uh, July 2018, a few months ago, we successfully raised $1.5 million in seed fund that are, is going to help us to move our candidate to later stage of the early de development. And this is, this is what we wanted to be for now as a company that we would like to develop gene therapy that are to treat uh, monogenic disease in the GI tract and using our non-viral delivery platform that are able to penetrate mucus and deliver gene at the lower curb where other stem cell residents in the GI tract. And um, while, while, I, while, while I'm talking here, we are working on how to develop a orally, or a routinely oral delivery because previously there are companies that are targeting GI tract because the volatility environment of the GI tract, a lot of our drugs are not very successfully made into 
the target sites we wanted to be and the other alternative delivery are interactive. But if we want to go, we want to go big. Why don't we make it oral? So currently, we have uh, two indications on the development. One is uh, familial adenomatose polyposis, which is a monogenic uh, genetic disease in the GI tract, gave rise 100% chance of getting colon rectal cancer. And the other one is a microvillus inclusion <coughs> disease, which is a rare often diarrheal disease. And uh, our, our aim to gain the approval is by, using, by, by going under those often or rare disease model that were allowed us to have a short trial and a cheaper route. The, so give to in, in, in a way that in a short period of time and uh, limited capital, we can really reach the inflection point and value of where we want it to be. So this is our team, Mobihij, who is, uh, who, Mobihij and Tim, who graduate from UC Berkeley. Tim has a PhD uh, in neuro, uh, neuroscience and uh, was in Dave Schaefer's lab. And uh, myself, before I joined DNA Light, I was in Venture Capital uh, in, in the Netherlands. And then, so, I don't know if you guys still want to start a gene therapy company now, probably is because it still sounds really cool, right? So to bring something that is more realistic, I would like to introduce you this circle. To go or not to go? This is a question. And I think we, as a small team, we deal with those questions every single day. We, we battle because we have such a limited resource and a very short timeline. And with what we have in hand, we wanted to do what's best can increase the value of the company. So we can, we, we, so, so, so we can meet our shareholders' expectations. And then to, to, uh, to, short, to short list all the, all the circles or steps that we're going through, we always start with idea, market, technology, intellectual property, how much is it gonna cost? Okay, if we figure it out, where can we get the money? I think in here, if, if any of you are international students, I think I, I, I did mention, I, did, I would like you to be aware of that or if you are about to start a company, check with your international office whether your visa will allow to you. Which, that, which this has been happened to one of our company's co-founder, which entered a huge problem because her visa wasn't, wasn't really suitable for starting a company. But just make sure so you don't go to the very end. And uh, if you're a student in UC Berkeley, depends on the agreement with the university and you wanted to commercialize your research. And I think the best person to talk to is technology transfer officer. They are here to help you whether you want to translate or commercialize your own research or your or research belong to the university. They are the person there to help you and to guide you through step by step and probably tell you, ah, this is never gonna work. It's probably, it's, it's not going to be easy to hear the but it's probably better to hear it early until you're in a very late. And um, sometimes being saying no is not a really a bad thing. We're being saying no by investors, by prospective partners, prospective advisor every day. But then it's great that we're getting feedback and feed those loophole that help us to make a decision that are, are rational and what's good for us and good for the company. And if you, if you still decide to go, I would like to bring a little gift from my old venture capital days. So this is a checklist that are, when I was an analyst at venture capital fund that are, we used to categorize what kind of company that are, really fits our portfolio, that are, it's good, it has a shot. And if you can address all the questions here, then you might be able to start a conversation with institutional investors, possibly venture capital, because if there's one thing or things that you cannot address, this is not, not now is the time to really dig in through. And then maybe during the process, you'll figure out or find out, oh, my technology does not work at all. And then it will save you a lot of time from these days until the very end. And that is okay. Technology sometimes does not work, but at least you know why it's not working. And uh, another thing that are as a, a company, I personally think that are, at the DNA Light, we did one thing really good, is understand our product. What we create is not only a therapeutic product, but also 
our team, our company is a product when it comes to investment or for people who wants to invest in us. And it's a, such an important aspect, I think, that are as are early employees of a startup that I realize that are how to manage your teams, find the right people, have the experience, motivations, and, uh, and, and the expectations that are what they want to achieve in this process, building a company. It's not easy and is definitely not impossible. So, and if you have a, and, and if you later on start raising money, you will get questions, you will get questions by the venture capital that are having doubts of your ability. Of course, everyone seems really young here. And that's okay. It, understand where your limitation and find the replacement to make, to, to make your limitation become, become actually a strength. And I think in the, long, in, the, in the long run from a series A, B, C, as you expand, and these things will become more obvious. And this is important that you know where to find and where to fail. Thank you. Yeah. So your company is germline editing. Sorry? Uh, like, does your company authorize germline editing? Is that sort of your like repertoire of therapeutic techniques that you are able to commercialize? Like, uh, so basically, our uh, the, the product we develop is a non-viral platform technology with uh, with uh, with the capability to insert a copy of uh, at this moment DNA and. Uh, our technology is not it is not aimed to do genome editing, but maybe down the line we will because our platform is able to carry, uh, for example, CRISPR-Cas9. But at this moment, no, we're delivering uh, DNA to the lower crib and without integrating the uh, genome of patient. I, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think uh, current gene therapy or cell therapy are are, are going that way. I, including AV gene therapy is always delivery a strand of a DNA rather than integrating with a patient's own DNA. Thank you. Hi, were you ever located physically in Berkeley uh, after Citrus Foundry and do you have any plans to return? Uh, that's a very good question. I think, uh, well, I, I, I think while uh, DNA Light was at Sertris at the time. We use we were here and we use core facilities that are at Berkeley, which I think everyone should explore if you want to do some preliminary uh, experiment to validate your ideas. And then we got accepted to Inbio and then and then Bayer's collaborative space. At this moment, we I would say thank God Bayer. We had a very good deal in terms of real estate price and uh, and and put us in a in a very good place. That are, we are also close to UCSF and uh, in Stanford down the line, but I think Berkeley still is our home, and uh, we come back very often. And uh, our collaboration with uh, UC Berkeley's core facility are continuous as we grow, and who knows, maybe as we expand, we will be coming back to Berkeley. It's always a home, right? Uh, could you please comment also on the future, on the milestones, also on the time frame? Like when you are expect to go to trial, how much you think it will take, and when you will be able to bring the product to the market? And I mean, just in terms of years, so you know, I would like to understand. Okay. And maybe follow up question is also how you're going to finance yourself, I mean, during this time. Uh, that's a very good question, and I think we've been thinking this probably only on a daily basis when you when you're trying to position yourself for future funding. So currently, we have a two indication; they're both rare disease, and I think uh, at our development stage, we're still in preclinic, and uh, we are finalizing our delivery vehicle to deliver a well type of a uh, well type gene to to rat model first. That's where we like to start off. In terms of clinical study, because the disease that are we going after 
are ultra rare, and uh, which which I don't know if you know. There's a there's a there's a thing called a compa compassion use for a patient who currently has uh, who has who has life threatening disease but without treatment. So that really helps us to reduce our trial period relatively short compared to other gene therapy diseases like hemophilia. Uh, currently, I estimate that there, with our vehicle complete, we we will possibly or highly possibly enter the clinic by, I would say, in three or four years time. And then through, uh, as a funding, we are raising venture capital, private, or private equity financing to that. But given this is a rare disease, we also actively apply for a grant, uh, which is free money. Everyone should also explore. As a as an early stage company, we can. There are this one thing about being a company in the U.S. You have so many resources that you can apply. I mean, they're not straightforward. It, it does take time, but when when it's there, it, it, you should explore like SBRR and and their other disease foundation. Let's I call it free money, not really free because once you commercialize, you do have to return to them, but not the SBRR one. And I think if you go for a monogenic disease, in addition to NIH money, possibly going for charity foundation, that also a good way to first uh, to meet professors because most of their uh, research are probably funded by these charities and also gain a sense of credibility and now it'd be really useful for future fundraising. Um, okay, I, I think I think it's very different. I think, for example, I, I actually had a t talk with someone on this question exactly yesterday. Probably a very identical question. I think, um, first of all, I think, regard my genders. I think I'm extremely lucky to be where I am today or where I used to be. And I think in venture capital, it is currently true that a woman hasn't hold much of a position. In, in such institute, as a matter of fact, I was the first female analyst was hired in, in the venture fund that are, the, I, I was. And uh, to be honest, I wasn't really thinking gender put me down or was a factor that while they hiring, I think it was more about fitting in, are you right part of the team? And I, I'm not, I'm saying this, not saying like, women are not necklaces elsewhere. But I would say personally, my experience has been positive. And I think being in the startup uh, world, especially in San Francisco, I think, I think, I think yes, it's true. Being, being a woman founder are much less in number compared to men. But I think the number are catching up. And giving all those resources we have here that are, that, that a woman possibly had a much better opportunity, let's say, five years ago, 10 years ago. And, uh, and, and, um, but regardless gender, we have to start somewhere, right? Even if it's, I don't know, minor, we have to have a, we have to make first step. And uh, if, if they are, if, if in the industry or a company or any professional environment, you feel like you are neglected or you're not being treated fairly as a woman, I think you should speak up because your tolerance is not gonna give you a better position. It's just gonna make things even worse, so. Thank you. You're welcome.